So this is the CME FedWatch tool that that anybody can can access on CME's website, which I think is, is it's a pretty neat little tool, which basically quantifies the market's expectations for what the Fed's going to do at the upcoming meeting. So you can see based on futures prices that right now the current probability of a 25 basis point increase at least as of Friday was 73% and the current probability of a 50 basis point increase was 27%. Now what I found particularly interesting were the green boxes below. Right? And look at how much things have changed over the last 4 weeks principally as we've gotten some updated in inflation and economic numbers that shows inflation is not gone and the economy continues to, to roll around. So you can see, if you look at the box on the right-hand side, that on January 24th, there was actually almost a 17% chance from a market expectation standpoint that there wasn't going to be any rate increase at all in Mar at March's meeting. And 80% chance or 80% probability of 25 basis points and almost no probability of 50 basis points. Now look at it, right? There's there's a zero probability that that there's no increase. And although the expectation is still for 25 basis point, the 50 basis point probability has increased rather dramatically. So I, I thought this was a very interesting chart to continue to monitor what folks think, what market expectations are going into the Fed meeting. And as we've seen in the past, the, the Fed watches this stuff. And so if market expectations are considerably different than what the Fed is thinking or what they're talking about, right? They have a tendency to leak things through the guy at the Wall Street Journal or wherever, but they try to make sure that the market understands where their head is at. So I, I thought this was a very interesting chart given the chart that we went through last week where we showed that market expectations for those short-term rates for that Fed funds rate was um, not only for higher rates, but kind of higher for longer rates. Just to add, guys, Stacey and I continue to talk about that we want to be on the side of more volatility. There's more uncertainty. Just like this, this is such a significant change. And the baffling part is that now volatility is, is actually rising, but during this time, volatility has come in. So all this uncertainty, and we talk about the Fed and the market are, are having a disconnect. Well, this is a reason, I mean, speaking for myself, but I'm, I'm sure I can stay, would agree with this, that these are the reasons of why we're so bullish volatility, because it's all this uncertainty that's in the market. You can see they're just getting it wrong. Yep. Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? Like, like these are just when markets move this much, they're priced incorrectly. Oh shit! If they totally readjust everything, but yet volatility in the overall market is coming down, that's that's confusing to me. Uh, very makes no sense to me. So selling on rallies is is a good bet when the market rallies, looking to sell because of how much uncertainty is in this market. Right, and you can use all the tools that we talk about to to make that judgment, right? Because JR, you always talk about the 100-day the and 200-day and moving averages. We've got the HVT, we've got, the, we've got fall viz. So we've got enough tools as well as the, the VIX tool. And so we have enough tools that you can start to say, okay, I see what's going on here. N now's a good time to either hedge up my portfolio, my trading portfolio, or my longer term portfolio, or to, or to take some profits on some longer deltas that I have, all, all, all that kind of stuff comes in into play. And it's not like you have to watch it minute by minute, right? The, those three or four things that we just talked about, if you do it either on the on the SPY like you have up or on ES Futures, it, it probably takes you less than two minutes a day, you know, either at the end of the day or in the morning to check these three or four things just to get a sense of where everything is relative to your trading portfolio. Markets get sucked down to big numbers and then they don't stay there. So this was something that we talked about as well. 2022, we got to see the moving averages here. There's going to be support. Whether we get through there or not, there's going to need some, they're going to need something significant to get through there. But as we trade down there, especially if there's not a lot of news, not surprising to see a little bit of bounce. 
but it's going to be crucial. And as we talked about, this becomes that line in the sand. Above, we can rally, volatility can come in, but if we get under this, be careful, long vol.